night. He was not the only presidential contender in town. Independent candidate Ralph Nader held a rally on Wednesday at the University of Denver, calling for an end to corporate control over the presidential debates. The longtime consumer advocate is making his fifth run for the White House. Nader's been a vocal critic of the policies of both John McCain and Barack Obama. When Obama selected Joe Biden to be his running mate, Nader dubbed Biden the MasterCard senator because of his close ties to credit card industry. Biden was a key architect of the 2005 bankruptcy law, which made it harder for consumers to file for bankruptcy protection. Nader's also criticized Biden for helping to create the modern drug war by pushing the 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act. Ralph Nader joins us here in Denver at Free Speech TV Studio. Welcome to Democracy Thank now. you, Amy. Actually, it's only three times uh, run for president, as our uh, website, votenator.org, points out. Why are you doing it this year? A lot of people got angry at you last time, uh, even the time before, though last time was mm. key. It's amazing how people can say that when, in the same breath, they will criticize the Democrat and Republican parties for being pro-war parties, pro-corporate parties, pro-military industrial complex parties. Uh, you know, why, why are we doing this? We're doing this to give voters a broader choice of agendas and to bring a younger generation in. At our rally uh, last night, it was just magnificent to see young people in their early 20s get up on that stage and with very articulate uh, uh, performances show what's coming. In fact, it was not only you as a presidential candidate uh, there. Uh, Bob Barr was represented in a videotape, and Rosa Clemente, the Green vice presidential candidate, along with Cynthia McKinney, who is the presidential candidate, Rosa yes. Clemente, also spoke. What was the point of your rally last the night? The point was, and why we did what almost no, nobody ever does at the presidential uh, candidacy level, bringing on competitors, uh, so to speak, uh, third party and independent candidates, is to try to break the grip of this corporation called the Commission on Presidential Debates that the two major parties created in 1987 and can control. And they don't want anyone else on the stage. And it, 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 that means that there's no way to get to tens of millions of people, unless you're a multi-billionaire like Perot, no way to get to tens of millions of people, no matter how many uh, states we campaign in, no matter how many giant arenas we fill, it's less than 2 percent of what we would reach if we were on just one debate. Now, we're at 6, 7, 8 percent in the latest CNN polls, 7 percent in Colorado, with no mass, uh, mass uh, mainstream television media. This is the latest poll that came out yes. this week. Yes. Explain again, and what in what states? In, in, in states like New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Minnesota, we're coming in at uh, six, seven, uh, eight percent. NBC National News, ABC National News, CBS National News, total blackout since February 24th, and. Uh, we're still doing that well. So we could turn it into a three-way race if we were really on those three presidential debates. Or if Google or Yahoo or uh, veterans groups who all wanted to sponsor their own debates and deliver millions of uh, viewers uh, would uh, get the cooperation of Obama and McCain. It's really interesting to see a difference here. Uh, McCain offered 10 town meetings to Obama. Obama said no. Uh, Google wants uh, a January, uh, let's see, uh, September 18th debate in New Orleans. McCain said okay. Obama said no. Veterans Group Coalition out of Fort Hood, Texas, they wanted a debate. McCain said okay. Obama says no. Isn't that amazing? Talk about the candidates mm. that, particularly that spoke last night. Mm. Um, la yesterday was an interesting scene in mm -hmm. Denver. Thousands of people were in the streets protesting, led by uh, soldiers who'd returned from Iraq, Iraq veterans against the war. They were going to play a clip of uh, that protest later. It mm -hmm. was mounting pressure through the day, the question of whether the riot police would actually tear gas them. They were all lined up. Their helmets were on. Their face um, uh, coverings were on. Uh, but ultimately, Obama's people came out to talk with them, which is actually all they were asking for at that point. Um, Biden accepted the vice presidential nomination. You spoke in a different part of Denver. 
Joseph Biden, what do you make of him as the vice presidential candidate for Barack Obama? Well, he's going to be probably an effective attack dog uh, against the Republicans. But we call him a Senator Plastic because he is the champion of the credit card industry. MBNA is in Delaware. It's a huge credit card company. It's given more than $200,000 to Joe Biden over his career. And he championed almost shamelessly uh, the anti-consumer bankruptcy law that his fellow colleague, Senator Chris Dodd, who's the uh, chair of the Senate Banking Committee, called, quote, the worst bill ever, unquote. And what it did, unlike corporate bankruptcy, it really squeezed people who had to go into bankruptcy because of medical bills, because they lost their job, as Professor Elizabeth Warren at Harvard Law School pointed out. Those are the two main reasons for bankruptcy. Uh, squeezed them horribly. And this paved the way for predatory lenders uh, to shift the burden on these hapless borrowers in the subprime uh, home mortgage crisis, as they call it. He's got a lot to answer for. He tries to say he, he moderated the bill and it could have been worse. But he's very corporate. He comes from Delaware, which is in a, has always been in a race to the bottom, to weaken corporate charter laws, which is why so many of the giant corporations are strangely chartered in Delaware over the years, like the big New York banks or General Motors. Uh, we want to use that to raise the whole issue of what Teddy Roosevelt and William Howard Taft were proposing 100 years ago, which is federal chartering of giant corporations. Take it away from the states like Delaware, rewrite the compact between the people and these artificial entities, and hopefully take away some of the constitutional rights to lobby and to engage in politics of these artificial entities, because they're not human beings, they don't vote, and they shouldn't have these constitutional rights. It's interesting, Senator Joe Biden himself was one of the least wealthy members of yes. the Senate. That's a commendable uh, impression that he's going to uh, give. You know, he's just a, a working fellow from Scranton, Pennsylvania, takes the train from <laughs> Wilmington back and forth. Uh, and that is commendable. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, look, uh, look who he's, who he's uh, standing up for, these giant corporations. And the, the shameless uh, drug war act was just, uh, you know, mandatory minimum sentences that have filled to jail, so we now have more prisoners. In in our jails, nonviolent drug offenders uh, than uh, per capita than anybody, any country in the world, including China. I mean, we don't send nicotine addicts or alcoholics to jail. Why are we sending uh, people who have drug addictions to jail? Well, you are calling on some people to be jailed, but we're going to find out what, just who those yes. people are uh, in a minute. We're talking to Ralph Nader. He's an independent presidential candidate, just held a super rally last night uh, for a number of 